Good day, students. Um, on this clip, we're going to be going over a three-part example on how to find uh, the velocity, acceleration, and jerk of the position function of an object that's exhibiting simple harmonic motion. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the uh, instructions for the example. Uh, title is Calculus of Simple Harmonic Motion. So, a weight, a weight, um, is hanging, is hanging on a spring, it's hanging on a spring, um, and it is pulled downward, it is pulled downward, alright, um, if it is pulled uh, downwards, downwards, seven units from its central position, its uh, central, write that again, from its central position, central position, let's say the central position is S equals zero, um, and then, and then released, the position, the position of the weight, of the weight at any point in time, at any point in time t, uh, is given by, is given by uh, the position function s of t equals seven cosine t. All right. So let's say we had um, a weight. Let me just make a sketch for you. A weight was attached is attached to a, a spring. So let's say we have it the weight attached to the spring, and this initial position is the s of zero position. Okay, this is when the weight is at rest, and then it was pulled down seven units from its central position. Okay, from to s equals seven. All right, so this weight was pulled down, and then it was released. So when if you pull it down and release it, what is it going to do? It's going to exhibit simple harmonic motion basically repeats this up and down movement theoretically forever if there is no re um, resistance a resistance or resistance on the in the spring so let's say it goes it starts to oscillate up and down and this function right here s of t equals seven cosine t models uh, the movement of of this weight okay uh, so the question is what we are asked to do is to um, find, find the velocity, velocity, acceleration, and jerk functions for the movement, for the movement of this weight, of this weight, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start out by uh, looking for the uh, velocity function. So let's, this is type of so solutions, solutions. All right, so, uh, we are going to need to remember our trigonometric substitution, I mean differentiation rules here in order to uh, do these problems correctly. So hopefully remember what your trig uh, differentiation rules are. All right, so let's start uh, with the uh, velocity function. So velocity function, velocity function. Velocity function is given by uh, v of t, v of t, okay, and then v of t is basically 
the first derivative of a position function is from a t. And that can be found by taking d, by finding ds dt. Okay? So ds dt would give us the velocity function. So what is s? s of t is 7 cosine t, so we're going to substitute that for s here. So we're going to take d dt, give it to the respect of time of 7 cosine t. Alright, so if we apply our differentiation rules for cosine, we know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that gives me uh, v of t uh, equals negative 7 sine t. So there goes my uh, velocity function for this for this weight that's oscillating on the screen. Okay. All right, let's look for the uh, acceleration, the acceleration function. All right, so acceleration, acceleration function. All right, so you need to remember that uh, the acceleration function a of t is the derivative of the velocity function v prime of t, which is also equal to dv dt. Okay, the so velocity here is negative 7 sine t, so we can substitute that for the v over here, uh, and then we're going to have d dt of the velocity function, which is negative 7 sine t. Okay. Now we're going to apply our trigonometric differentiation rules again for uh, sine. What is the derivative of sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of negative 7 sine t, which is the acceleration function, is basically negative 7 cosine t. Okay? So that basically gives you your uh, acceleration function for this particle that's exhibiting simple harmonic motion as a result of being pulled on the spring. All right, uh, last but not the least is the jerk function. Okay, the jerk function. Uh, okay, so the jerk function, j of t, can be found by taking the first derivative of the acceleration function. So a prime of t is basically a jerk function. a prime of t, or well, the derivative respect to time uh, of a, the a dt. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We know a of t is by looking at this result that we have here, negative 7 cosine t. We're going to plug it in here. So we're going to do compute d dt of negative 7 cosine t. All right. So we're going to make use of our differentiation rules for uh, trig again to find g of t. So the derivative of cosine we know is negative sine. So the derivative of negative 7 cosine t will simply be 7 sine t. So there goes your uh, jerk function for this for this weight that's exhibited in simple harmonic motion. Okay, so um, another piece of the question says that we should um, at any point in time is given by find the velocity, acceleration, and jerk function, which we just did uh, for the moment of this weight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to state how are how are all these uh, three measures related to your position function. So the question is how. Uh -oh. uh, question is how are your velocity, acceleration, and uh, jerk functions related to the position function. Okay, so let's say with the position function, can we find acceleration or jerk uh, directly from position function? Well, absolutely. Let's start with the velocity function, v of t. v of t is simply uh, as prime of t, the first derivative of your um, position function, the dt. We indicated this back earlier when we're looking for the velocity up here. So v of t is s prime of t, which is the dt. Now, what is your acceleration uh, function? Well, acceleration is the second derivative 
of your position function, which equals d uh, square s, makes it okay, uh, d square s dt square, okay, and it's also equal to the first derivative of uh, the velocity function, which is uh, dv dt, okay. All right. Uh, now, how about your your jerk function, g of t? g of t is the third derivative of your position function, which is d to the third s of dt to the third. Okay, and then it's also equal to the um, second derivative of your velocity function, which is d squared v over dt squared. And it's also equal to the first derivative of the acceleration function, which is d. Oh, I'm sorry, this right here is supposed to be d square s. Yeah, d square, do that. Yeah, that's correct. Second derivative of your velocity function. Yeah, that's perfectly right. And then it's the first derivative of your acceleration function, which is dA dt. Okay, so there you have, this is the relationship between uh, the three functions. So starting with velocity, differentiate once you get our acceleration, differentiate again, you get the jerk. And then we start from uh, the position function, differentiate once you get velocity, differentiate again acceleration, and then the last time you get the jerk function. Okay, so there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Um, Please subscribe to my channel by clicking up here for more cool math videos such as this. Collection of clips can be found on madwareserve.com. Uh, also, do feel free to share this content with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Thanks.